Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my algebra video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the properties of numbers as well as how to work with like terms. And of course, we're going to learn all this just by solving lots of problems. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so first we're going to talk about some properties of numbers, and this is pretty basic stuff which you probably already know. So, the community of property of addition just basically tells us that whenever we add values, it doesn't matter in which order we add them. So we can add 1 plus 5, and that's going to be equal to 6, or we could add 5 plus 1, and guess what? That is also going to be equal to 6. And that is all you need to know about the commutative property of addition. Likewise, it does not matter in which order we multiply values. And I'm referring to the commutative property of multiplication here. So once again, we can go and multiply 5 times 6. And guess what? We get 30. Or we can go and multiply 6 times 5. And equally, we will get a value of 30. So we're just rocking right through this. Then we come to the associative property of addition. And it just basically refers to the fact that the parentheses are not going to have any bearing on your final answer whenever you calculate those or whenever you add those values. And I'm just going to skip even doing an example here. And basically, it's also true that whenever we multiply values, that it does not matter if there are parentheses or not in that situation. The only way parentheses really come into play in regards to receiving different answers is whenever you mix up multiplication and either addition or subtraction. So those that's whenever you have some differences. But however, the distributive property of multiplication is both extremely important, especially whenever we're solving equations, but also it's a little bit more confusing. So I'm going to go through some little problems here with you. Okay, so let's just take 2 times and 3 plus 4. What this means is if we want to solve this, we are first going to multiply 2 times the 3, and then we're going to multiply 2 times the 4, and then add those values. So 2 times 3 is going to be equal to 6, of course, and then we're going to say plus 2 times 4, which is going to be equal to 8, and of course that is going to be equal to 14. Okay, so you just have to go and multiply whatever the value is on the outside times each of the individual terms and then add the sum together. And I'll do a couple more of these. Let's say we have a negative 2 and that is going to be multiplied by 2x. And let's throw in another variable here, 3y. Well, we're going to once again multiply the negative 2 times 2x and get a value of negative 4 x and then we are going to add but remember this is going to be a negative number because negative 2 times 3y is going to be equal to a negative 6y and of course this then would be turned into negative 4x minus 6y all right and there's a couple examples of the distributive property of multiplication and of course, whenever we get into solving equations, we'll get more into it with more examples. And that brings us to working with like terms. Now, very often you're going to hear words like coefficient being used, and that just means the number that lies before our variable. And of course, you know the variable because we've been talking about it a lot. So one thing you can do is you can add like terms. So for example, we can go and say get 2x plus 3x and add those together to get 5x. Pretty simple. We can also come in and let's say we have 4x plus 2y plus 3x. And if we work this out, we cannot add the x's to the y's, but we can add our x values. So let's add 4x plus 3x to get 7x. And then that just leaves our 2y here on the outside. And let's do one more. Let's say that we have 8xy 
squared, and we have 4x to the power of 3, and we have 3xy squared. What are we going to be able to add? Well, in this situation, this is the same two variables, so we'll be able to add 8 to 3 to get 11xy squared, but we can't add the 4x to the power of 3, so we'll say plus 4x to the power of 3. Okay, and as you're going through these, you should write them out and pause your screen and take notes and then go back and try to solve them on your own. And that brings us to subtracting like terms. How does that work? Eh, pretty much the same as whenever we are adding them. We can go and have 2x minus 3x. And of course, that's going to give us a value of negative 1x or just simply negative x, however you'd like to do it. Also, you could have 4x minus 2y minus 3x. And if we work with that, of course, we're going to subtract out the 3 from the 4, and that's just going to give us a value of x. You can put the 1 on there if you'd like, minus 2y, and there you go. And that brings us to multiplying like terms. Now, you're basically going to be able to multiply any two variables. So let's say we have 2 times, and let's use parentheses here, 4 x that is going to be equal to 8x so you can see here we're going to be able to work with unlike terms whenever we're dealing with multiplication also let's say we have a negative 2 and we can use our distributive property here which we just learned about so let's say this is 4x plus 3y how's that going to work well we take the negative 2 times 4x and that gives us a value of negative 8x and then the negative 2 times the 3 is going to give us a value of negative 6y. Let's do a couple more. Let's go and get 2x and then let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's say we have 3x squared minus 1. How is that going to work out? Well, we just go and we're going to multiply these coefficients. So we have 2 and 3. That's going to work out to 6. And then whenever it comes to working with the x's, remember we are going to add. And this right here actually has a value of 1. So we're going to make this x and then 1 plus uh, 2, which is going to give us a value of 3. And then we can say plus, and this is going to work out to negative 2x. And then, of course, we can just go and get rid of those parentheses and such, throw in a negative sign, and take our little 2x and move it over here. And that gives us our final answer. Let's do a couple more. Uh, let's say we have 2, this one's going to be a little bit more complicated, xy, and x to the power of 2 minus 4xy plus Yes, I'm making it a little bit more complicated this time. 3y squared. What is that going to be equal to? Well, we are going to go and get the 2, and that's going to be x. And then we're going to get this 1 that's right there, and say 1 plus 2. That 2 comes from right there, of course. And then we have our y that's left here afterwards. So we can go and put a multiplication sign in here if you'd like, or just put y, whatever you would like to do. It's totally up to you. Then we're going to say plus, and the 2 times the negative 4 is going to give us a value of negative 8. We will take this x right here, and then this x right here. So that's going to work out to being x squared, 1 plus 1. And then we can just put y inside of here. Well, we have one y here and one y here, so let's go and make this y squared. Put this like this, and then we can say plus, and we're going to take two times three to get six, and then we only have one x there, so let's throw the one x inside of there, and we have a y, and we have two y's. So one plus two is going to be equal 
So 1 plus 2 is going to be equal to y squared. And I think you can go and figure out the rest of these, or I could do it for you. Just come in here, get this little guy here, change that into a 3. We can come in here, get rid of these parentheses right here, along with this addition. Get rid of that parentheses right there. And grab these guys down here, move them into place, and there you have the solution to your problem. And just to reiterate exactly what was going on here, let's say that we have 3x, y to the power of 3, and this is going to be times 4x, y. This is going to be exactly the same as if we said 3 times 4 is going to be equal to 12 times, and we could get this x right here and put that inside of there, times this x right here, times three y's. So we could write these out, and I'm just gonna put a dot here for multiplication instead of going and having to do that fancy thing. There's that y, and then you have this y here. So times y, which of course is going to be equal to 12. How many x's? One, two, so x squared. How many y's? One, two, three, four. y to the power of four. And there you are. And now let's talk about division. This time I'll make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say we have 4x to the power of 3 and y. And then let's introduce another variable. Let's throw z inside of here. And this is going to be divided by 2x, y. Well, we can go and cancel out this x right here and we can go and convert this into a two instead. We can cancel out this y, cancel out that y right there, and then we can go and solve our problem. So we have both of these guys canceled. We can divide the four by the two, and that is going to give us a value of two, of course. Now we have x squared, and then we have z. And there we go. Let's do two more. Now I'm gonna have a negative four x to the power of three, and we're going to divide that by five to the power of nine. This is going to be equal to, let's put this negative sign out here, and we're going to subtract the nine from the three, and that's gonna give us sort of a weird type of answer up here. That's going to become four x to the negative six over five. And whenever we have an exponent that is negative, there is a negative exponent, we're going to move it to our denominator. Denominator's down here, numerator's up here, remember? And this is going to give us a final answer of four over five x to the positive six. All right, and let's do one more here to finish it up. Here I'm going to say, let's go and get x squared minus two, and let's divide this by two y, and then let's get even more complicated and divide that by two minus x, which is then also going to be divided by four x y. Wow, that's getting complicated, isn't it? Not really. This is going to be equal to Again, we're going to have our x squared minus two divided by two y. And then we multiply this and we flip. We get the reciprocal of the second. So this guy down here goes up here. So we'll say four x y. And that is going to be divided by two minus x. Whenever we multiply these values out, what we're gonna be able to do in this situation is cross reduce, and that just means anything we have in the upper part up here and the lower part down here, we can get rid of, and we could also do the same here in this way. Hence, the reason why they call it cross reduction, okay? So what do we have here? Well, we have a Y up here and we have a Y down here. So what that means is we can go and delete both of them. There's the Y, there's the Y, just went away. Also, we have an X in the lower right-hand corner and an X in the upper right-hand corner. We're not gonna be able to do anything with those though. We will, however, be able to go and simplify this two in the bottom left-hand corner 
and that is going to become a 1. And this 4 in the upper right hand corner, because you can divide 2 into 4 2 times, is going to become 2x. And now what we can do is take this guy right here and this guy right there and multiply them together. So we'll say 2x times x squared is going to be equal to 2x to the third. And then 2x uh, multiplied times the negative 2 we have right here is going to give us negative 4x. And then we're going to divide that by the 2 minus x, which is left here. And there you go. So that was a little bit more complicated, but I think you can get it. And if not, just keep working through it. Go and copy down the problem and then just work it out on a piece of paper until you get it. So that's it for this video today, and in the next video, we're going to focus 100% on solving equations. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.